Welcome to Jimmy Kimmel Live. I'm your guest host, Lamorne Morris. Um, you know, this has been a fantastic experience for me. I want to thank God for this opportunity. Um, and this is my second and final night hosting the show. And I know I've only been here for two days, but man, I feel like I've made some incredible friendships here that will last a lifetime. Like, um, who's that dude? Uh, <laughs> ca camera guy, man. <laughs> Give it up for camera guy. We're so close. We're so close. And the lady who brought me, she, she bought me a salad once. You know, that's. <laughs> Honestly, I thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. Very, very nourishing. And then there's the security, uh, the security guard with the mustache. He's always getting stoned in the parking lot. Um, uh, what was your name again? <laughs> Kyle. Kyle. Kyle, yeah. Yeah, thank you, Kyle. You're welcome, man. You're welcome. Yes. Guys. Well, Kyle, uh, Kyle, you might want to pay attention to this because uh, according to a new study, young people, they're using marijuana and hallucinogens more than ever before. Now, I looked it up, and apparently uh, marijuana, right, it's a, um, it's a plant, you know, <laughs> that some people, they, uh, they, they smoke it, apparently. <laughs> I mean, this is the first time I've heard of this stuff. Um, somebody just, just be cool, my mom. My mom is here again in the audience. Um, so you know, uh, I got a question for you, Mom. Uh, you ever, you ever smoke marijuana on national TV <laughs> <laughs> or in the privacy of your own home? I don't know. <laughs> My minister is watching. Ah, oh, okay. So don't let the, the pastor know that you're into gummies. I didn't say that. Okay, okay, I, okay. No I comment plead, on that one. Plead the fifth. She plays the fifth. Uh, my mom is not into marijuana, you guys. Um, but here is the thing. Uh, thank you. Clap for that. You can clap for that. She was like, hell yeah. Say no. Down with dope. Um, but here's the thing. Of course, drug use is it's up. It is. You know, life is so bad right now. People would rather fight an ancient serpent in an ayahuasca nightmare than to log on to another Zoom happy hour, OK? <laughs> like, and honestly, I feel like drugs had to be involved in what I'm about to show you right now, because this is a cautionary tale about standing too close to a car while it's doing donuts. Oh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's weird, yeah, yeah. The ass and the furious is what I call it, yeah. Yeah, I love the fact that this man just got hit by a car and nobody, nobody went to help him. They just pulled their phones out so they could see his beat up <laughs> It was like, oh, he squished his penis. Everybody get your phones out. Uh, so you know how Donald Trump was, uh, was keeping top secret files in his basement, uh, right? Well, it turns out that since he left office, the government has recovered more than 300 classified documents from Trump's house. Now, it's amazing that they let Trump walk away with hundreds of classified documents. Meanwhile, the one time I accidentally took home a New Girl script with some spoilers in it, Zoe Deschanel, she showed up at my front door and threatened to stab me with a ukulele. <laughs> You'd be shocked how many ukuleles she has in her house. Um, now, Trump claims that these documents were declassified because he said so, which... Okay. <laughs> All right, I'll take your word for it. But if they're declassified, bitch, let me see them then. I want, man, I want to see the UFO stuff. I want to see the, the nuclear codes, the Batgirl movie. I want to see all of it. I want to see all of it. I want to see the Batgirl movie. You know, but I do, I do kind of feel like this, this is all on us, right? Because what do we expect him to do? Entrusting Donald Trump with our national secrets, it's like, it's like asking R. Kelly to babysit. <laughs> Are Kelly fans in here? You guys like R. Kelly? OK. Step in the name of love. I get it. It's great. You know? Uh, so have you, have you guys been, uh, this, is, this is a weird one. Have you been following the Herschel Walker campaign? Yeah. You have? Yeah, you're big into it? Um, well, I don't know Herschel, personally. But I grew up watching the guy. Man, was he a great football player. Now he's running for Senate. He's running for the Senate. Well, you know, and he's got a lot of, um, you would say, interesting ideas. Now, for example, uh, this is what he had to say the other night about the Democrats' new climate bill. They continue to try to fool you like they're helping you out, but they're not. 
that I help you out because a lot of the money is going into trees. You know that, don't you? It's going into trees. We got enough trees. Don't we have enough trees around here? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we got a lot of trees. Uh, <laughs> this reminds me of that age-old question. If a tree falls in the forest and it lands on Herschel Walker's head, would he have more or less brain damage? <laughs> now, I, I don't know the guy, but I know everyone's clowning Herschel Walker for saying that we don't need more trees. But, you know, I think maybe he was taken out of context. All right? It makes more sense when you hear the whole statement. A message from Senate candidate Herschel Walker. Hey, it's Herschel. Uh, how come people love trees so much anyhow? You know, you ever thought about this? I think about this every day, yesterday, and all the days. What live in trees, man? Owls? Y'all know the bird? Owls, man. They heads, they heads spin all the way around, like in a circle, like that devil girl from that movie, The Exercise. Man, I tell you what. Yeah. It's spooky. It's spooky, man. Owls, they creep around at night times while we sleeping, and we don't know what they up to. And who love owls? Harry Potter and all them little witches running around. And what do witches do? They hunt President Donald Trump. Always talking about witch hunts. Man, you want to stop the witch hunts, you got to stop the owls. Yeah. <laughs> You take the owls out of the equalization, man, no more trees. And what do they do with the trees? They boil those trees, and then they turn them into books. What? And y'all know books is no good. They put them in the library. Man, got all them words. Nobody know what them words mean, except the phone book. Man, that one got numbers, like one. It also had uh, three, and seven, and nine. And... Oh, boy. <laughs> Herschel head's starting to hurt. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to sleep now. But if you wait, wake me up if you hear an owl. This is the message from Senate candidate Herschel Walker. Question. Uh, have you all seen that movie, The Rise of Gru? Yes. Right? Yes, 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 yes. It's about the minions. You know, those little dudes shaped like your grandma's fish oil pills? Uh, well, apparently, the government censors in China didn't like how the movie ended. So they just changed it, right? Instead of the original version where a villain named Wild Knuckles gets away with his crimes, this is what the audience saw in China. Wild Knuckles tried to steal the Zodiac Stone again. He was arrested and served 20 years in a villain max prison. <laughs> now, the Chinese government can't just make nonsensical changes to movies, you know? That's what studio executives are for. <laughs> and look, while, you know, I don't endorse censorship of any kind, it did give me an idea for how to finish my monologue last night. We got music from the Dusty Truck Band, and we'll be right back with Dave Franco. Lamorne Morris was so magnificent at talk show hosting that he signed a 50-year, $100 billion contract with every TV network and went on to become an international symbol of virility and sexual charisma. Jimmy Kimmel retired in shame and later died in prison. Sorry, Jimmy. Sorry you had to find out this way. Um, now, this is crazy. In 2026, I'm not sure if you all knew this, but NASA is planning to put people back on the moon for the first time in more than 50 years to establish a human presence there. This is what they said. Or in other words, we about to f up the moon, y'all. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Mom, for my language. <laughs> this is going horribly wrong for us. Our relationship will change after this, I'm sure. Um, and you know, space, it's cool. It's cool and everything, but it's got a major representation problem, one that I'm actually hoping to solve with a new project I'm very proud to launch right here tonight. Hello. I'm television sensation and real-life Blackman, Lamorne Morris. I know you're excited, so please, wipe yourselves off. Now, like you, I've been following the stories of billionaires launching themselves into space for no good reason, and I couldn't help but notice all these men have one thing in common. They're all white as hell. So, today, I'd like to speak to the rocket-obsessed rich dudes out there. Bezos, Musk, Branson, Jimmy Buffett, I'm assuming. 
It's 2022. Let's diversify the cosmos, add some melanin to the Milky Way. It's time to blast some brothers into space. And I'm just the man to do it with my new company, Malcolm SpaceX. <laughs> we didn't land on the moon. The moon landed on us. <laughs> with just a few of your many billion dollars, you could fund this first of its kind space program designed to bring black folks to the great unknown. And I've already got the crew picked out for our first mission. Well, there's me and Dr. Dre, Jay-Z, of course, Beyonce, you gotta have Diddy, and one white guy named Bradley in case we get pulled over by the Space Force. Any Bradley, Cooper, Bradley Cooper. He's, Bradley Cooper's fine. <laughs> they keep trying to push Bradley Cooper on me, and I'm like, I, he's okay. Yeah, he's fine. <laughs> For our ship, we're not going up in some dong-shaped rocket like you clowns, looking like a d trying to those rings and Jupiter and Mars. I've never been to space, so I don't know which planet has the rings. Our ship will be designed by Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bugatti. People will be writing bars about this bitch. <laughs> Same goes for our space suits. None of that frumpy Michelin man stuff, okay? Ours will be designed by Versace. And they'll come with climate control helmets so you won't sweat out your weave. And instead of boots, we'll be wearing LeBrons. <laughs> also, we're not eating space food that comes out of a damn tube. We're serving a full soul food menu. Safety be damned because who's gonna be mad when a warm slice of pecan pie floats into their mouth? Not me. <laughs> when anything floats into my mouth, I, no, well, the time is now. We need to get up there before the moon gets gentrified. So let's come together in the name of unity and make some history, you rich mother Malcolm SpaceX, if you don't give us your money, you're racist. Uh, but I'm